it's the beatingest thing to work for you ever seen. I'm out here crashing and burning in a couple of parts of my system here. And he's over there taking care of everything just like I'm a normal human being or something. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Go ye, saints. You may not go where I go out to all those mountains and more than likely your difficulty level won't rise to that level. More than likely. I, some go past and beyond all of this because I am not telling you everything. Just believe me, that's just about a half of what we went through. I ended up, the, the grand finale of it all was putting my daddy in the ground. Putting another missionary, a young man, filled with zeal and love of God, got martyred down there last year. These things are rough on you as a leader. They take away you and let God be in you. You can't keep on without Jesus. It's a great honor to be standing here and looking you in the face because of the mercy of God. It's the grace of God that we breathe. Go, ye saints, into the world and preach the gospel to everybody. He that believes and is baptized, you're going to get him saved. Do you understand that? But he that don't believe, that's not your problem. He's damned already. And this is what's going to happen to you because you believe. You're going to cast out devils. I'm preaching. It's a pastor's conference of one of our sections. There was about 30 of our national leaders there. I'm talking on church government. Not a very exciting thing to talk about, really. Church government, how we're going to function, what we're going to do, how we're going to set up elders, what we're going to, how we're going to take up offers, what we do, why we do it, just looking through Scripture with these people and, and just setting up a structure of government of God's, uh, of God's Scriptures in a place that's never had any before. And herein walks a man, long-haired man, really drawn, real pale, walks right up to me. And I'm talking on church government. And this man walks up. This is quite an interesting story. How far can I go with demon spirits? Uh, does it matter? Sure. <laughs> we, we, we've had four or five manifestations lately that really test everybody's ability. It don't matter what denomination or faith. It's serious. We run into some devils. Boy. They come after us. That's okay. I can tell this. Or do I need to be light on it? Go for it. I'm teasing you, aren't I? You won't think so in a minute. So, uh, uh, you know, normally if, uh, like if one of y'all get up and walk up here to me, I'm going to ask, what do you want? You know, that's, a, that's probably a good question. What, you know, you're this close to me. And you're preaching, right? What do you want? You know, that's a good question, I thought. He said, I was told that you have God. And I said, you was told right. I do have God. God's in me. The eternal hope of glory lives and abides in me, and I live and abide and dwell with Him. It's a blessing. I, you're right. You, you were told right. This is the truth. He said, well, you're going to lay your hands on me, and I'm going to be healed then. And I said, not so fast, buddy. First of all, I want to know, are you born again? Don't know what that means, he said. So I took my Bible. We left off with the church government teaching for a minute. Did a little Roman road walking. Got the man born again. First thing, right off. Said, now, that's the most important thing that ever happened to you in life. Now what's your problem? Said, because there's a Holy Ghost that's going to fix it for you. It doesn't matter what its name is. He said, yeah, they told me you'd say that. I said, well, whoever these people are, they're telling you the truth. He said, I have these things inside my body walking around. I said, you did what? He said, yeah, these things walk around inside me and they cause me much pain and I, it hurts me really bad. I said, uh, what, what are these, these things have a name? He said, oh yeah. He said, every morning I wake up with my bed full of them. They come out the top of my head. They're called snakes. 
Wow, it got quiet in here. Did you hear that? What's the name of that sprint thing? We could have heard it. Couldn't you hear that? <laughs> Brother Hogan, he was doing great. I don't believe that. I didn't ask you to believe it. I told you I'm not trying to please you. All I'm doing is reporting to you what happens. And I looked at him like you shut up just now. I was just as quiet as he was. <laughs> But you see, there's a, there's a little thing right here. It says, and these signs, verse 17, it's in there. See? These signs shall follow who? Okay. You don't believe what I'm telling you. No sweat. It won't happen to you. No problem. You, you exempted yourself. But if you believe in Jesus and his power... It don't matter what the witch doctor says and does. Jesus' power is going to beat him. Because it says that the believer can lay hands on these people demon-possessed and they must come out of them. They must flee from them. So I'm a believer and I do believe he's a demon-filled person. So I have the right, according to Scripture, to touch him and the demon has got to obey. So I called all the pastors around. I said, you, you people heard this guy. He's got snakes coming out of his head. <laughs> that does sound weird, don't it? Snakes coming out of somebody's head. That's really weird. But it's the truth. It's demon spirits. Witchcraft is very powerful. Turns out he was, a, he was an assassin for a living. Turns out he had assassinated this very wealthy man. I, know, I knew when the man died. It was right close to my house. I heard the shots, actually. The family is very wealthy. They hired this very famous black magic warlock in our area to cast a spell on him and kill whoever it was. They did that. This man comes down sick. Snakes come out of his head. He's going to die because they're going to kill him inside. Okay, that's what happened. So we laid hands on him in Jesus' name. I know this day very well. It was because I had some tremendous things happen to me around this day. It was September the 15th last year. And amazing week that week. Really an amazing week. It really was. And, and then I, we laid hands on him in Jesus' name. And then two or three weeks later, I was at a place called Chicona Mel. Another one of our works. It's a very large work. This one, it's a really hopping place. You'd, like, you'd really like it there. It's a nice place. A lot of, we had uh, at this place, uh, just a couple of months ago, we had, uh, we had two, two ladies dead with sarampion negro, it's a, it's a disease, and they were laying right out there in a, in a whole pile of dead bodies, and, and the brothers went and laid hands on them too, and they got up, healed. Nice place to go. There's really a lot of things happening there. It's fun. And uh, so I go there for service.